How do you know if you're applying your Saint Shades in the best way for you? How do you know if you're applying enough or using the right brushes in the right way? We're going to cover all of the most common issues that you might come across when you first start trying 3D foundation from Saint. We're gonna talk about everything from how to pick up your foundation on the brush, what's too much, what's not enough, are you getting the right coverage? So many things that you can easily avoid before you even try your makeup for the first time. So I am Sarah Martin with The Contoured Chemist and I am going to go over and show you all of those things today and more. If you wanna check it out, please keep watching. Okay, friends, if you are new here, welcome. I'm Sarah. I've been an artist with Saint for seven years this summer. So all of these things are things I had to learn the hard way on myself and troubleshooting with clients for years before these things were discovered. My belief is that I can get this makeup to work for anyone with the right application method and the right color. If you are willing to try it, so let's get right on into it. These are the things I hear the most and they make me cringe because they can easily be avoided. And before I start, I'm gonna start with my sunscreen because believe it or not, your skin, the base you have, the skincare routine you have, the sunscreen you use, they can all affect the way your saint is applied to your face. So. This is a new favorite, you guys. If all of my OGs here that have been following for a while, you know I love my chemical, my organic sunscreens, and I didn't think I would ever actually like a mineral. Uh, I do really like the One Skin one I shared on Instagram, but I also, I, I this might be my favorite mineral of all time, and it's actually silicone free. So you can actually wear it under Saint. Uh, Light Saver. It's slightly tinted and I don't know what it is. It just, if you can kind of check out my skin right now, this is just after my morning skincare routine and I'm going to go ahead and apply this. It has like this whipped formulation. I don't know if that's why, but look how quickly that goes in, which normally if you don't know, mineral or inorganic sunscreens are best if you have a sensitivity, like sensitive skin. And I love this because I can use it all around my eyes and I do not get any eye sting even if I start sweating like outside at a baseball game later. Cause I do have four games to go to tonight. Okay, so I'm gonna let that sit while we start, but it's so good. So always give your sunscreen ample time to dry down and form the film. The film is the magic of how sunscreens work. They have to like settle, organize as they dry down to form this perfect film that protects your skin. That's how sunscreens work. It's not that like, oh, they don't work and but they absorb in your skin and don't work for 15 minutes. It's nothing like that. There's so much misinformation about sunscreen, but it does need to dry down. And so while that is going, let's talk about the number one issue I see with Saint. And I'm going to clean my brush in the process, <laughs> in the process of explaining, because I want to really concentrate today on application amounts, how that is affected by brush choice, how that is affected by how you're using your brush, um, your skin underneath your brush, how <laughs> you're getting your creams out of the 10. There are a lot of factors that play a part in how your makeup is going on because this just isn't a bottle you can squirt out. Granted, there are definitely techniques 
when it comes to liquid foundations, don't get me wrong. But with this makeup, it took many, many years for some artists to figure these things out about how this makeup works. Um, you might not realize that artists are not given this like makeup training, color matching training from corporate or anything like that. Um, some teams don't even have color matching training per se. And a lot of artists are learning as they go. And it's a lot based on experience. So I will be honest, when I started this business, I'm slightly embarrassed about some of the people I did my very first matches for. I'm sorry if you're watching this, please reach out to me. I would be happy to recolor match you because I needed to learn through years of experience on not only on my own face, but for my clients as well as I figured out what was working and not working for them. So I wore the wrong shades, not maybe not wrong per se. I don't want to say anything is wrong. No method is wrong, but not the best options for me for years. <laughs> Scary to say. And let me just make this very clear. I'm not even saying that what I'm talking about today, I won't find better ways for in the future because there's something about this makeup that I feel like I'm always learning new techniques and new ways to make it even better. And again, my preferences have changed. I wear my makeup a lot less heavy than I did in the beginning and good skincare and good skin definitely plays a part in that. It all comes down to how do you like to wear your makeup? Not all application methods are equal or the best choice for everyone. For example, some people like to use their fingers and they dip in to these creams and dot it or smear it on their faces. And if you've watched my videos for any length of time, you know I tell you don't ever swipe. <laughs> Swiper, no swiping. Don't swipe into the creams, don't swipe on your face because of loads of issues and the main one is that it will streak, your coverage will be worse, You'll be using far more product than you need for a small portion of your face. And although it might look great on social media, you might want to click on it, might look super easy and fun, it may not be your best option. And I find as someone who troubleshoots with a lot of people and recolor match a lot of people that it is not the best option for most of us who want good coverage without it looking heavy. So my biggest issue when I tried that method was that it looked heavy, I could feel it on my face, and let's be honest, I color matched myself from a Pinterest graphic and had the wrong colors. With the wrong colors, you will always, 100%, always be applying too much product. So let's get into what is too much product look like. I'm going to use our trusty brush cleaner to clean this brush. I already got this side nice and white. I really want to be able to demonstrate to you guys how very little product I need to even out my skin tone. I don't think it is easy to recognize on social media or even through a video how people, how artists are actually applying these creams because every artist applies differently, color matches differently. Some people don't ask your preferences about like how much coverage you want. Some people will just match you to a collection. Uh, I don't do that. I find every single match is completely personal to that person. So if somebody's asking for natural coverage and one person's asking for medium to full coverage and has some concerns and they look like they're the exact same skin tone, I'm not gonna say, oh, just go buy this collection. My brain doesn't work that way. I don't work that way. I am a scientist and guess what? I am going to give you the most customized answers that you could possibly get on, well, use this in this way when you want this and this and this and how you can adjust as you get lighter, darker, all of the things that go through my brain because I, there's a lot of nuance to this makeup. It's not slap it on your face with your hands 
and call it a day. I don't think it is and probably most of my clients who have tried the makeup and love it don't apply that way, <laughs> okay? So now that my brush is nice and white, I'm gonna show you how very little product I'm gonna pick up. Now, here are the things that you can't see through the camera that affect how I am picking this product up, okay? First thing is the color on screen, on in the 10, on uh, the website. This is not gonna look like how it's gonna look like on your face, okay? Now, if you see a color like this that is so scary to most people, this is mango. And when you're applying it on your face, let's see if I can get a good amount. It looks like the color in the 10. That is probably enough for your entire face. And now this, unless that is your main shade, okay? But this, th these 10s will never look like they do in the 10 when you apply them on your skin if you're applying them in the correct amounts, okay? That is so much product. Like, why didn't I get out the wipes? Because, like, I still have some left on my finger. Just for fun, I'm gonna take that and apply it to this white sheet of paper. Oh my gosh, I can't get it all off. I can't get it all off. Okay, it looks like it does in the 10. That is a great indication to me that you're picking up way too much on your brush or your finger, okay? This is a, why I personally think the finger method makes you apply too much product, and here's why. If you have that much, how can you distribute that everywhere evenly in a thin amount when it will highly depend on what's on your skin and the brush you're using to whether that's gonna be able to spread out. Now, when I say skin, I mean how tacky is your face, okay? So all of us have different skin types, all of us have different skincare routines. Every sunscreen is gonna give a different type of finish depending on the sunscreen you pick for your skin type, so on and so forth, okay? And so I notice a difference between the sunscreen of the day I'm choosing to use or test because some of them are a little more tackier than others. And guess what that means? That means that makeup is, this is a cream, okay? These highlights are very tacky. And if you've ever felt it, you might be like, okay, that's not what I am picture, like envisioned because you probably thought it was gonna be a really creamy texture. Whereas our lip and cheeks, our illuminators, some of those products are really creamy and you'll notice the highlights are tacky, the contours feel dry. They're all designed in a certain way in order to stay put where you put them. And so those highlights have that tacky base so that they kind of stick and they adhere to your face and they're not moving. And that's because creams don't set and you want them to stay where you put them and not migrate to all of those lowest points in our face, which just in turn leads to what? Creasing. Okay, so because that's tacky, if you have a tacky base of any sort, if your skin is super hydrated and you spent time on your skincare routine like I like to every morning, guess what? That is not going to spread across your entire face. It's going to get stuck in one spot and you're going to have to work really hard with a really dense brush to move that around. And in turn, what happens is that you just end up applying more in other places that isn't needed. And then you're getting a heavier look. You no longer can see your skin. You think this makeup isn't good. I've heard it all. Your face. If, you, if your face is dry and you don't have any kind of, kind of grip to your skin, that makeup is going to spread way easier. So you just gotta think that like this, the tackier your face is, so the more hydrated, which in my opinion, hydrated is a better thing. And so I want to be able to hydrate my skin, give myself a really good, nice base of skincare so that when I go in with my makeup, 
it enhances my skin, not covers it up, doesn't make it look drier. And we all know most makeup can make dry skin look drier, cling to dry patches, all of those things. We wanna avoid all those things. And this makeup truly can make your skin look glowy and never should look cakey. And every time somebody comes to me and says, this looks cakey, I'm like, you have the wrong color. It will never look cakey unless you're layering up a color that's too light for whatever area you're applying it. So if I, this big dark spot, if I don't use a spot dark enough for that spot, guess what? Every color in our range that is lighter, I can put it on a little bit, it's not gonna make an effect. I layer it up to get more coverage, guess what? It immediately starts looking cakier and cakier. Doesn't matter the color because it's too light for that spot. A lighter color will never give you good coverage on a darker area. This is why I use color correction. Night and day for me and for 99% of my clients. So that is Mango. She's not scary if used correctly, okay? So the other thing you can't tell is, you can't tell from looking at an artist's compact how fresh, new, dried out the creams might be. And I'll be honest, this is a rather new mango. You can probably tell because there's not a hole in it yet. But this little bitty tent of makeup, okay, which I've heard people make comments before like, it's so small, I didn't think it'd be so small. That's never gonna last. That lasts me about six months, okay? If, and that's, I could probably go longer if I truly melted it down and used every last drop. That is how long these creams take to go through, and that is how little product you're using upon every application. Now, you're opening and closing this palette time and time again, every day. This is not airtight, let's be honest. So over time, these creams are gonna dry out, and you can tell right here, it's more dry. I can barely pick up any. This one I just dug my finger into. And then guess what? I barely tap in and I'm gonna get a lot of product, okay? So when you when you get a brand new cream, they're creamy, okay? They sometimes have this like protective kind of film on top that you might have to get through, especially the contours. But once you kind of get through that, you're gonna notice it's really creamy. Also, a new brush, a clean brush, anytime you clean your brushes, this is all of a sudden gonna pick up more product in my opinion, than a dirty brush. I've heard the opposite said, but I truly don't believe that's true because every single time, um, I think it's because when you have a dirty brush, it's like the product is already getting the bristles a little bit. When you pick up product, it kind of stays on top. Whereas as soon as you kind of like touch the creams, some of it goes down into the bristles and it doesn't have that kind of like layer almost that like, makes it just kind of stick to right where you touch it. So just knowing that gives you kind of a heads up that like, okay, I've got a brand new cream, I've got a brand new brush. Sarah told me that's gonna pick up more product. Okay, so what's that mean? How do you pick it up on the brush? So first I'm just gonna show you my color corrector because I feel like I get the most kickback about using a shade like Mango to hit the darkest points on the face because I've got blemishes, I've got dark spots, I've got a lot of broken capillaries, under eyes, rosacea, lots of dark spots, let's be honest. I've got almost an entire face of what I would consider a concern that I want good coverage on, okay? So I don't want full coverage, I want my skin to show, but I want all of this evened out. Is that too much to ask, right? And I don't want certain things to really like show through um, and be distracting. Now, if it does a little bit, I'm totally okay with that, but that is just me. Your personal preference is yours and you can add as little or as much as you want, but there's knowing like how to add it, okay? So I'm gonna start by just showing you, this is the blend brush. She's probably, best for once you've tried it. Um, maybe not best for the 
absolute beginner because this brush end is a little awkward to learn how to use, but I do love this small brush. It's nice and kind of dense enough to pick up product, but not so dense that when I touch the creams, I'm going to be getting a load of product that then we're going to have to spread across my face, like I said before. So let me just show you, okay? This is how I pick up mango on the brush. <laughs> you can't even see it. I promise it's on there, guys. Do you see? Focus. Do you see how very little? Okay. I'm telling you. Okay. That's how much product. And that is, I feel like I should have grabbed carved sock because it's making like more of like a damp stain because it is a cream product than actually showing you the amount of color there. But this is how I pick up the product on the brush, okay? I kind of just dab in so I get it at the very tip. There you go, you can see it a little bit better there, okay? And then that's about how much I'm gonna use for each area that I need. Now, that doesn't mean I'm gonna go not pick up more, but I just kind of want to show you. Okay, so I always start with usually like my broken capillaries. Okay, now the key with color correcting, now I turn bright red because I've got very reactive skin, but trust me, it'll kind of die down in a second. Um, I'm not necessarily looking for coverage. I just know I want to use the smallest amount of product. I want to buff it into the skin and not have to just lay it on thick, okay? This way, I'm not dipping in, getting a large amount of product to where I have to work on spreading it across my face. If you're a little bit more strategic and you just pick up what's needed, you're not going to be over applying. And people just don't realize until you try the product. I didn't realize that I applied way too much in the beginning, how very little it actually takes. Okay. And so here I dabbed in a little bit more kind of see because that brush was pure white and here I'm going to go into my rosacea. Okay. Now it's going to turn red before it gets better. I promise. But here I'm just going to buff it again. I'm not just touching it to one spot because I have kind of that tacky base and this is, it gets way more harder <laughs> if you're using some kind of like a gripping primer, like I see a lot of artists, um, recommend i don't recommend a primer find a sunscreen for your skin type doesn't have silicones and just use that i promise your life will be so much easier it's going to save you a step and you're not going to have like it where it like kind of sticks to this one spot um and i'm just going to kind of slowly kind of buff that and when i touch my face for the first time let me show you again i am going to almost like i'm barely touching the face and what I do is I almost like kind of distribute it around. And sometimes I don't do it in slow motion because I'm just practice so much. I can do it quickly. Um, but for a small brush over a small area, this is how I get a very thin amount across my entire cheek. Just enough to color correct the rosacea and start blurring all of those dark spots. Now, depending on your skin, everyone's skin is different. You might be like, okay, Sarah, I need to like blur that one spot a little bit more. And so you might find yourself buffing on a little bit more in one area versus another. And that's what's so great about this makeup. You don't just have to smear it all over your face. You can easily just color correct where needed, not necessarily everywhere. So that is kind of what I do, but a majority of my face is going to get a small amount of my corrector. That's because a majority of my face needs this evening of my skin tone. And so when I color match you, I will mark on your face and I will describe it in words so you understand if it's just say your nose. Like some people come to me, their entire face is pretty even but their nose is like five shades darker. I kid you not. And when I say five shades, I mean like maybe your nose is red or your nose is very tan and the rest of your face isn't. It's very common, sticks out from our faces more than anything else, right? 
And so you might have one area of your face that needs color correction. Um, but a majority of people need this light hand on the darkest points of their face. And so I mark that on your photo. You might not think that this is a darker point. Okay, so like my forehead looks pretty even. It's the most even part of my face. Thank you. Um, which isn't saying much. But like I get, I, I have rosacea and rosacea is a butterfly pattern. So I get right here, can get red. And what? Show texture. Sometimes it's not even a color issue. It's like, okay, I see that you have more texture on your chin. That's one of the areas I have texture. So this area is not darker. It's actually a lighter point in my face. But for some reason, and I think it's because, let's be honest, I break out on my chin more than anywhere else. Uh, I got a lot of like, almost like texture, I think just from like scarring, that kind of thing. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna buff it on that. Because guess what? Your makeup's gonna sit better on your skin. But look, can you see that I put a color that most people describe as orange on that area of my face? No, like maybe a little bit, a smidge darker, but guess what? I'm matching the darkest point. It's gonna make every color sit better over that and it's gonna lessen the amount of texture. It's gonna give me better wear time, better longevity, better coverage, better evening. Like, but if you were to go in and dab your finger and smear it right there and try to work that out, it's not gonna look good. That's when you start saying, I'm looking orange, I'm looking dark in areas I'm not matching the rest. It's 100% the amount you use the brush you use, the technique you're using. I stress light hand, but how light is something that people take a little bit of time to grasp because unless you can really see it in action, I feel like it's hard to tell how much product I'm using, okay? So now we're gonna go to the other side. Okay, I'm gonna do my chin. Now I'm using this brush for simplicity sake so you guys can kind of see, but my favorite brushes for color corrector are gonna be anything that is rounded at the top, slightly dense, and that works with what I call a buffing motion, which is small circles that Something about the rounded tip will distribute that product over a large area and make like spread it, thin it out, whatever you wanna say, so that it doesn't look heavy on the skin. Um, so that's why I love this end for detailed work. Um, I also use the detail brush, but do you notice the difference in brush Ends. like the way this is curved versus this one, I can tell a difference. So I don't use this as much, but in a pinch, you could most certainly use this end of the detail. The most recommended is probably the blush brush. It will cover a large surface area over a short amount of time. And I say this is where most people start, especially if you have mature skin. Um, or if you need a large like portion of your face covered in color corrector, which again, if you have a lot of dark spots, a lot of redness, mature skin, or you're building up to medium to full coverage, that's where I would start. So again, it's got the nice curve, it's dense enough, but it's nice and soft, so it spreads really easy. So the n number one most recommended brush by most artists is my last recommended brush. <laughs> Again, because of this reason. And you might think, oh, that looks similar, Sarah. And it does. So this is the third, I almost said 32nd. Oh my gosh, that was the original name. The 3D, you can tell, I don't recommend it much. But this end is so much more dense than this end. Um, it's very dense, meaning the denser your brush is, 
the more it picks up when you're barely touching the creams in the tin. So if you're barely touching it and it picks it up in one little spot and then you're trying to distribute that, it can also lead to a heavier hand and just be harder to use in general. And I find this brush is best used when you practically use this round end for all of your face, which I feel like is kind of pointless to the fact of having a double-ended brush, let's be honest. Like I recommend it for color corrector, main shade, um, contour, blush, and then maybe you could use this weird pointed end for your brightener if you brighten. It is my least favorite. So that's how I feel about this brush, in case you were wondering. And then the other one that, I'll be honest, I don't know how, like these were supposed to be limited edition. I don't know if they really are. This is a Demi brush, the Shape brush, okay? Again, it's, I like this, I like this end. This is even less dense than this. And so this is even going to pick up even far less product than this one will, in my opinion. So I get this question all the time. Do I need the brushes? In my opinion, it makes the makeup 10 times easier if you're using our brushes. And not only because they're designed for these particular creams, but also because your artist can help you troubleshoot. Whereas if you're using a random brush that they've never used, it's going to be harder for them to help you know where your issue lies. Um, if you can't, if I can't feel a brush and really know, like this brush was sent to me in PR. Okay. It's beautiful. It's a really beautiful brush. It is nice and dense. This brush would buff on product like a dream, but it is so dense. It would pick up so much product, but unless I was able to touch it, can't, you can't tell from looking at a brush. I mean, you can kind of tell based on bristle length, but like I wouldn't really be able to help you as much being able to troubleshoot unless I really was able to feel the bristles and feel how, how different it is. Like, I'm not saying that you can't get the brushes you have to work for you because I'd say I do have clients who don't use our brushes and can use this makeup just fine. If you're not using our brushes and, and you're needing help, that is most likely the first thing that solves it for most people is just getting our brushes and using them in a certain way. I don't know if it'll be easier to see. Okay, this is the Shape Brush in black, which is an artist exclusive, but I don't know if you'll be able to see the product on it easier or not as easy. No, maybe that's worse. <laughs> but the shape brush, you can kind of see it on there. Do you see what a nice light like distribution? A lot of times it's also like how the product gets picked up on the brush because when it's like distributed over the bristles in this way, guess what? It's way easier to then apply it on the full face and be able to Gently, just kind of buff it on. And guess what? It's gonna save you a lot of time when you have a brush like this versus you're trying to apply with a brush like this, like the buff brush doesn't actually buff well whatsoever. So um, bad choice of names in my opinion. All that to say, there are better options than others when it comes to brush choice. like. Love this end, this end, so floppy. So this would not be a good choice, even though it, it looks similar online. Guess what? This one's dense, this one's not. This one makes it way harder. You can't buff on with loose bristles. It doesn't work. It has to be dense enough that the bristles stay when you're doing this motion. And so, Look in your brush collection if you need to, but that's what you're looking for, for your color correct. And if you can find a bigger brush like this that you can easily buff on a larger area, guess what, it's gonna save you a lot of time. Like this is why I normally use the blush end to color correct. This is what I recommend for beginners Just because both of these ends are more functional than some of our other options. So I'm gonna literally finish color correcting my face. I'm gonna show you how much I'm picking up and I'm just going to the same method 
by barely touching and I'm gonna do the rest of my face. So I do my entire nose. If you didn't notice, it's darker than everywhere. And you gotta match the darkest points of your face in order to get good longevity. And it kind of helps blurs a lot of my dark spots as well and the redness from my rosacea, all the things. But I'm gonna do the same thing under my eyes, okay? So I'm gonna even out this entire area first. So same thing, small circles. But when I'm doing this delicate eye area, guess what? My eye skin is, I'm not in my 20s, okay? It moves, right? So I am literally just using the very tip of the brush and you'll notice some of the color just kind of gets even picked back up by the brush the way I'm distributing it because I'm using this technique almost as a wash in order to add color and coverage at the same time. So a lot of times people talk about toning and they use something like our Bella bronzer to kind of tone the face first. And that is definitely an option to apply less makeup. But you just have to be careful because that doesn't give better coverage or longevity, but it is a method to apply less. I'm doing the same thing, but I'm using mango because that area has a lot of discoloration at the same time. It is lighter and I'm adding to that oh, as I poke myself in the eye, but it's also gonna kind of even out those dark spots. Kind of cancel out some of that blue and purple. Under eyes are where I see the biggest issue of I almost want to say misinformation where people think that they can use what a lot of artists will call this lightest shade, not your brightener, but your concealer. It's not a concealer. The lighter you go in our highlight shades, the less concealing it can actually do, in my opinion. The less coverage it's going to give because it can brighten, but it will not give coverage to anything darker than that highlight shade. So I have very light areas under my eyes, but if I was to put this, all of those dark spots would be emphasized. Um, they're not gonna be covered. They're gonna actually make that highlight give more texture because that shade is too light for the area under my eyes, if that makes sense. So if you have depth in any way, shape or form, don't use this directly in the inside corners. It's not gonna give coverage in it won't sit nicely on the skin, especially if you have more mature skin like me. It emphasizes all of our texture in all the wrong ways. I know they're trying to like make it seem more simplistic that this is like, okay, like your foundation and your concealer, but with highlight shades from Saint, they work very differently. You match the darkest points of your face first so that then these shades will sit on the skin without giving texture. You go lightest to darkest, you're gonna have the opposite effect. You will hate it, I promise. So always apply darkest to lightest. We're not there yet. We're just going to get that coverage first by using the darkest shade. And you, and do my under eyes look orange? No, once again, as little as possible. Our goal is to apply as little product as possible it will never look cakey or heavy or any of those things. If you're applying in this manner, we're gonna use as little as possible to get coverage instead of smearing it all over our face and then having so much product, we have to set it with a loose powder or it's gonna rub off on our clothes. You apply this way, you will never have transfer. You will never have heavy, thick makeup. And let's be honest, we're going into summer. I live in a very humid state. And the last thing I want is for my face to feel sticky and tacky due to cream makeup. No, that's a sign you're playing too much or you're wearing too light of shades. Okay, so here's the part where I have a nice thin layer all over, okay? But that doesn't mean like I've fully covered everything you don't necessarily need to like color correct until you can't see whatever you're wanting coverage on. So whether it's this dark spot, 
I'm not gonna keep adding product until it's completely gone because your main shade is going to add to the coverage. Okay, but we've done step one. We buffed on a thin layer. Step two is using the same color corrector to go in and add more coverage where you want. Same brush. Now, I like to pick a denser, smaller brush so I can only put it where needed and not press this all over because I don't want it to pull my entire face way darker. So again, same thing. We're gonna tap, tap, tap. It's getting harder to see because now there's just so much product on my brush, but like these dark spots, for example. I had not buffed on any product down here. So I'm just kind of buffing and pressing to blur those out. You see that? Now, that doesn't mean they're completely invisible because they're not. I can still roughly see where they were, but I'm gonna kind of build up that coverage when I get to my main shade. Same thing when I just want like more coverage, say dark spots, inside corner. I am always notoriously dark here. I blame sleep. So I'm gonna press on where I need more coverage, okay? So the buffing motion, thin layer, pressing motion, build coverage, okay? Now, this is about the only time you might see me pick up my finger to use a cream, okay? Sometimes I will use my finger and barely tap, barely tap and then use the warmth of my finger to kind of spread that, to kind of blur the edges on especially like a large sunspot like that, okay? Sometimes you'll also see me use it on blemishes because there's something about that like broken skin that does not want to hold anything. It just, just stuff doesn't want to stick to it and something about warming up the cream with the warmth of your finger can really help that situation. But you can always use your brush too. I sometimes will just use my brush and then once I'm completely done with my face, I might go in with my finger if I need, an area needs a little bit of help. So this is the pressing stage. We're just gonna go on, and this is where you're gonna customize your coverage a little bit more by adding gonna tap and then we're pressing, not buffing, pressing. Okay, and this is the part I feel like most people skip. Like they buff it on all over and they put on their mane and they're like, I still have spots showing through. Okay, well, did you press on more where you need more coverage? And this is true even after we do the next step. We're about to put on our main shade and kind of even ourselves out. Guess what? If you're still seeing a spot after your main, you can go back and color correct main shade again. I promise you if you are correcting with a dark enough shade, when you layer product, you will not get cakiness. I promise you. The only time you get cakiness with this makeup is applying too light of a shade. I've seen it a million times. So if you're ever getting cakiness and it's taking way too much of that combination, that means that shade, that whatever, maybe your dark spot or your under eyes, maybe your color corrector is not dark enough for that spot. Then you need to reach out and we might need to try the next darkest corrector shade in order to kind of see if that works better for you. We're gonna hit main shade now. Now I've shown this brush a lot. It can be a little bit difficult to use for a beginner. Okay, this would be my choice for medium coverage would be the blush brush. I will say the shape brush is quickly becoming my new favorite for this because it's going into summer. I really like this brush, but I find it just sometimes doesn't work as well as I'd like it to. This is a great in between these two, like medium and even full coverage. You just have to go in with more product, to be honest. Um, natural, very, very light hand. So I'm gonna go with the shape brush, this end, and now we're going into our next color, which is our main shade. So the way I color match, if you're needing a corrector, I match your shade, your main shade, depending on 
what you tell me you want to match because this since this makeup is so different you can't just be like oh, okay you're about this color it doesn't work that way like because this is going to pull you a little bit warmer our best color correctors are always warmer than probably what your skin tone is um you're going to need something to keep you matching so some people like to match their neck some people like to match their chest some people like to be a little bit darker on the face it's whatever you tell me you prefer and if you're gonna be getting darker or whatever the case may be, and I will choose your mane to keep you matching and this is gonna help you whether it's toning down the warmth of your corrector or just helping you build up coverage without pulling you too dark. I mean, there's so many factors I take into play. So this is again, why I never match to collections. They're just not custom enough in order to work for everyone's face. Now, if I color match you and there's a collection that has some of your colors in it, by all means, but this makeup was designed so that you can customize an entire compact with the shades you want, including being able to pick a lip and cheek color that you're actually gonna wear, eyeshadows that you actually will wear and not having stuff in your compact that you're not gonna wear. I recommend going custom, it is the way to go. Yes, it takes me longer to color match you, but I don't care. I want you to love your makeup from your first application and not be like, well, these colors are okay, but these would be better. And if you really add up those collection prices, you're saving like $7 or something. It's not worth it to me if you could get a better match. So if you ever have questions, just reach out. Let's go into main shade. Again, I'm just gonna barely tap. Can you see? I feel like you can almost see it better from this side. See, just, I mean, that's very, that's literally how m very little. I mean, maybe I should show you guys what it looks like when you apply too much. My Sandy is a little dry. It's not brand new. So people that are going in and swiping with pressure and they're getting that on their brush. If you ever see the makeup on the actual bristles like sticking together, do not go in to your face with that. Guess what? That is just gonna stick to that one spot. And then how are you gonna like blend that out when you've already corrected and you're gonna get this uneven patchy coverage? I, no. So let me clean my brush real quick. Actually, let me show you what that looks like. That's a lot of product. Look how much is still on my brush. Ew. The people that think they need to like wash their brushes in between colors, if that is why, because your brush looks like that, you have a different issue, okay? So, do not swipe into your creams. You will for sure, without a doubt, be going through tens in a month or two, which is, absolutely a waste of money. I love this brush cleaner. It's already dry, ready to go. Now that I've made my cream way, like now I barely have to touch in because it's nice and creamy again. So if you do that, you won't have to pounce in quite so hard. So pressure is a big thing. I don't pounce into highlights with much pressure at all. I lightly, lightly tap, lightly tap. Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of tap this and I'm literally just bouncing it over my skin. Now again, depending on how much you're picking up on your brush, like now I only need to barely touch it one time to get the amount I actually want on my brush. So if this was a brand new cream, this is what I would do. Like, look at that. You can, I don't know if you can see that. That is how much product I actually want. Okay, so I just kind of move up my face. Tap. 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 Now, you'll notice I never color corrected my forehead, so I actually do press on my mane all over my forehead. OK, 
Okay. Can you tell? Very natural. I don't look heavy. It look It's starting to look a little bit heavier in certain areas of my face, but it doesn't look cakey, doesn't look dry. I've got a nice even tone that I didn't have before. My rosacea is neutralized. I'm looking just very like flat, right? And so the whole purpose of 3D foundation is to what? Give us that three-dimensional look. So let's move into contour. Um, I feel like I've spent a lot of time on highlight. I don't even know if I'm gonna use a brightener today, I will be honest, but now that I have this base of my corrector and main, when I go to put highlight, my brightener shade, not my concealer, because it won't conceal anything, when I put that on, I can steer clear of where I have the most texture and I can keep it in this area to kind of brighten. I can use it where needed to add light and bring in my lattice tones if needed. I'll be honest, lately I've been skipping it and it truly depends on your color match and your face. And if you have lighter tones, say in your neck and you're still trying to match, sometimes it's like not uh, optional for your perfect match and you really need those that brightener shade. And if you ever have questions over that, depending on how I match you, just let me know. The detail brush. This is my ride or die contour brush. Now let me explain how different the highlights and contours are because I either get, I can't see my contour or I can't get up on the brush or it's just all bl blending together with my main shade. And all of those things are, in my opinion, application issues. Because if I color match you, I know I've picked a contour for your skin tone, for your concerns. And if you're applying the colors I told you to, that should be no issue. But how you're applying your contour is a different story. And after I color corrected and everything, and so that my hyperpigmentation is not gonna pop out with my contour, this is why our color correct main shade. I have a nice even canvas on my cheek now. So when I apply my contour, I don't wanna move that and expose all of that redness and all those dark spots coming through. It's gonna make my contour look patchy and unblended. Um, if I don't do that, it's also gonna make my rosacea flare and which will in turn make all contours I put on my face look red. Not fun. So color correction, game changer. If I already use my finger and apply a stripe, what do you have to do in order to blend that out? A lot of work, okay? The more you blend, the more you have to blend, the more you're gonna expose all of that that you just covered, okay? So I don't recommend that at all. The goal is to not like use this into the brush and just make a quick, easy stripe that then you have to work longer to blend out. The goal is to apply it, blend it, and move on our merry way as quick as possible without disturbing all of the concerns we already covered. Now, if you are one of the lucky people that has no hyperpigmentation, rosacea, redness in your skin, extra things that need covered in those areas, by all means, apply it first. You are lucky. Doesn't work for me. Um, and the older I get, it works way less because of Sun damage and all of those things. If right. you're having longevity issues or things showing through during the day, uh, try this method. It might solve all those issues for you. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a warm contour, which before I learned this method, I could not wear. I could only wear the coolest contour and guess what? It still pulled red. So I've color corrected, so now I can wear colors like cedar. Now, our contours are so dry in comparison, okay? Like if I were to put that on and try to blend it, you're not gonna see it. It's gonna look, it's gonna look like nothing on my face. So the reason why this is my ride or die is because I can use this brush and it just makes life easier. And isn't that the point of this makeup? To make your life easier so that you can get to where you can apply this makeup in three to five minutes. I know that's why I originally started wearing it 
And once you know all these things, it just makes your application easier and easier because you're not having to troubleshoot what's happening and you get fast at application. So the way I'm really fast is the way I pick up my contour on the brush. Because this is dry, swiping in, all it does is it picks product up and smears it into bristles, okay? To where then you're like, okay, but I'm like putting it on my face and nothing's coming off, okay? There's still so much product stuck in those bristles. It's just not coming off. It just doesn't, it, it doesn't work in the same right, way. Here's the magical way that changed everything for me. Take your detail brush, hold it at a angle about 45 degrees, okay? 90, 45, right there in the middle. This will allow you to pounce into the product. Now, the contour is the only one I ever recommend applying some pressure to the product as you get it on your brush. And that's because it's dry. And um, you'll realize how long these contours last and how hard it is to even get it on your finger once you're like been using it for a while and it's in your compact and then it begins to look like this, okay? It makes it way harder, right? It doesn't even show up, okay? That's when it's time to melt it back down, get it fresh again. Now, these are new, so they're not needing to be mel melted down yet, but this is how I get it on there. Now, these are rather creamy, but I wanna show you guys. So, 45 degree angle, and I'm going to just pounce with some pressure. You can notice by how much the bristles are kind of like bending as I get it up in there, okay? Now, what this does is it makes the color only get on about half the brush. This brush is pretty wide. So if you were to put a stripe on your face that wide, it's not gonna look very natural. Most people's cheekbone indentions are not an inch long, right? So I use this method to pick up enough product on the brush. If you can see it on the bristles, you got plenty. And this also gives that even distribution like I was talking about. I know I'm a little methodical. It's the scientific mind. I can't help it. This just works better, I promise. Okay, so now you're gonna apply your contour like you normally do. You're gonna act like you're cupping that cheekbone. You're gonna start where the darkest part of the shadow would be, which would naturally be back towards your ear, okay? If you don't know where your cheekbone is, grab something you can roll on the side of your face. It's about top of your ear to the corner of your mouth. Okay, so we're gonna go, we're gonna cup this cheekbone. Now I am barely touching my face and I'm gonna move the product and I barely touched my face, okay? And again, I'm distributing the product evenly. Now I touched this part first because that's gonna distribute the most product, right? It's common sense. Like wherever you touch your face first, the most product will go, right? So you're gonna touch it back there first so that's where the deepest part of the shadow and you're gonna slowly kind of tap till about the corner of your eye, okay? It will naturally go in a little bit, but you do not want it in this mustache region, right? And you wanna keep it nice and high so it doesn't drag this part of your face down. Now I still got plenty of product on that, okay? So now I want to, obviously I wanna blend that out without doing what motion? This, which is naturally what people wanna do. Okay, naturally they just wanna do this and rub it back and forth. And all that does is move everything that's on your skin already, okay? So, start pressing. And start pressing along that line. And as you press, I want you to start adding more pressure, okay? You do not need much pressure with this makeup, but when it comes to your contour, it's dry. It doesn't wanna move around. But guess what, the best way to blend it is by pressing. Pressing is magical. We call it stippling here in the cream makeup world. It's what adds coverage and it what well, it blends at the same time. So, little work as possible. We're just going to keep pressing. Okay? And then I'm going to start 
tapping upwards. What's that do? It moves the product up so that I have that heavy distribution of product right where my contour should be the darkest because that's where the natural shadow of my cheekbone is. But as it goes up, it fades and it's gonna got that ombre effect because we're gonna put our lip and cheek right over it. And that gradual from contour to lip and cheek is what makes the contour look natural and not unnatural on the face. We don't just have this stripe, this solid line. We have a natural blend, okay? And we don't have a harsh stopping point. It will naturally blend in and you just keep pressing. Now, did I uncover any dark spots? No, I never rubbed the product. If you feel like you do have a harsh stopping point, just grab that highlight brush and just tap. You don't have to do anything crazy, just tap. And if you want to emphasize down here more, you can even go into your brightener and tap on that brightener. You can even carve it out. Whatever you wanna do, because this makeup is so custom, but there's no reason to swipe into your creams, to use a dense brush that is pencil thin. Um, let me tell you, I started by doing it that way. It made it easy to learn location on my face because I, I kind of learned where to start and stop, but that, should, that shouldn't take you too long, okay? You start here, imaginary line towards the corner of your mouth, but stop right here. So it's just this, this area right here. Once you got that down, I highly recommend using this end. Blend, apply at the same time. Game changer. Okay, for time's sake, I went ahead and finished contouring the rest of my face. Same concept applies. Press it all along your hairline. Key is making sure you're blending it into your highlights. You don't want any harsh stopping points there. Again, along the jawline, blend down your neck. Easy peasy. Obviously, you can add and build as much or as little as you want but you're not gonna be blending it all away. And if you need to kind of blur harsh stopping points, that's when our next magical step comes in, the perfector. I couldn't do this video without mentioning the perfector because this truly is the game changer when it comes to application amounts. So many people skip this um, because they think it's just an extra add-on that's not needed. I was one of those people that thought that. I didn't use it at first, but once I really learned how to prep it, how to use it and where to use it in my routine, it was night and day. So you can probably tell I'm already getting creasing, okay? Because I just have a lot of lines there, right? Like as we age, there's no stopping that, right? Doesn't matter how much I try to control the amounts I'm using, I will get creasing. The only way to remove excess with this makeup is this, the only way, the literally the only way. And if it's not prepped properly, it won't pull off excess. It might blend a little, but there's a magic sweet spot. So I will link a video that shows how to prep it down below. But this has been like air drying as I've talked this whole time. It's just right. It's just cold, not damp. And now when I use it and tap around my eyes, it will remove excess. Now, if you're very heavy handed, you might really need it, especially as you're beginning to learn this makeup, you might need this more so than you will when you've kind of grasped the concept, been using it a while then you might be able to just switch to just around where you might crease. Personally, I know I focus on my smile lines and around my eyes because that's where I crease the most. But I always do a quick once over my entire face so that I, again, can get more of that skin-like finish because what did I say I wanted? I wanted nice, even tone, but to show my skin, like that's, the goal and that's the way I can achieve it with this makeup. It's 
all about the amount of product you're using. Okay, a few more things that you might be applying and maybe thinking that you can apply differently, but the entire premise is if you are one of them like me that needs a color corrector and needs to not move your coverage once you get to this point, do not ruin it by putting on something that you have to work to blend out, okay? And slowly build coverage, okay? It's pretty easy, right? Bronzer is one of those examples. I see people then dot it and then have to work to blend it. And then again, you're moving stuff. Our bronzer, I've seen some people say they can't see it. I see some people say it's too orange. It's all about the amounts, guys. So here's what I do personally, because I feel like the 10 is too small to get on this giant brush, right? Bronzer brush. This is Bella bronzer, which is the OG, the most universal. And then I've got Glow and Heat Waves, which is for darker skin tones. I will tap into Glow Illuminator and Bella, and I will swirl into both of them to get a distribution across all the bristles. If you go in with any more of a dense brush, it's going to apply it heavier to one spot. That way, you can just tap. Again, everything gets tapped. No more blending, no more buffing motions at, at this point. So then you can apply as little or as much as you want. I don't think that looks orange at all. So we tap as little or as much as we want because a bronzer's entire purpose is to warm up the face. You're a bronzer girl, you probably wear it every day. I wear it as needed. Next shade, lip and cheek. So my favorite part of the makeup process, I will be honest. But again, I don't use my fingers and dot it on my face. Did you see how many spots we've already covered? So again, I also find that that is very hard to control the amount. And sometimes you might look clownish afterwards if you've applied way too much lip and cheek. We've all been there, right? So again, use a brush. It takes a little bit of time to learn the lip and cheek you might have and how much to pick, on the pick up on the brush. The glossy ones can be more sheer, but they pick up more on the brush. Um, the matte ones are more pigmented, but they don't pick up as much. Again, tap everything. So this is a very bright blush. I'm obsessed with her. This is Tiger Lily. I'm going to tap and I'm gonna to gently touch my face so that I can control exactly how much pigmentation I want or need. And our blushes do kind of like tone down as they warm up on this skin. So give it a few minutes, do your brows, come back and be like, do I need more color? It's so much easier than you trying to then pull off all the excess or try to work on blending and maybe possibly like uncover things that you already covered that you didn't want to uncover because you're working like this to blend out your blush, right? So I think my go-to all summer is going to be Tiger Lily. I'm obsessed with this color. Like it's just like the most beautiful summer flush, like just summer vibes. And then of course, topping it with Sunshine State, which is one of our least pigmented shades knowing that and then once you kind of learn the lip and cheeks you'll know how much to tap in but this has got the gold glow wait for it oh money so if you like the gold if you like the glow she's my favorite of all time and i'm so happy she's finally permanent that i can wear it all year round last but not least usually my very final step in my routine is illuminator the you know what i said earlier i don't ever swipe into anything okay i lied this is the only thing i swipe into now i see a lot of people oh like use their fingers and kind of do this i can never see it like when people say that i can't see my illuminator how are you applying it it's very simple 
how are you applying it? It goes for everything. What brush are you using? What cream? What? <laughs> how? How, how, how? The Perfector. It's already damp. You've already used it. Now you can swipe. Only time, okay? I swipe in generously, like one, two, three, four, five, maybe. You should see that baby on your Perfector, okay? Then you can just simply very gently touch the face. You don't swipe it on. You never swipe anything on, but you can swipe into the cream illuminators, not the powders. Holy moly, not the powders. They are so pigmented. They're like shimmer galore, glitter factor if you swipe in. So now you can see it and they should look like a natural glow as you turn your face. You shouldn't be able to see like this stripe. And I find when you use your fingers, sometimes you look and you're like, see fingerprints on your face? It's not a good look. Use this, it blends it at the same time so you don't get fingerprints. Okay friends, finished up my face, some brows, same colors on my lips, just lined with my contour. And there you go. Really natural, glowy, shows my skin. Did not use much product. I don't know if it helped at all to kind of see. <laughs> oh man, it is one of those things that's just very hard to describe until you try it for yourself. Like understanding how different these creams are, how differently they work, how deceiving the colors really look. Do those look like my face? I didn't even use the brightener. Like, just use these two. They can be so natural. You can build up to medium to full coverage. The best part about these creams is that you can decide every day what kind of look you want. Based on how you're applying them, the methods, the brush choices, and you can change it. So versatile, so personal preference, and hopefully my method helps you in some way, maybe seeing how you can tweak your shades you might already have, or if you need a new match. I'd be happy to help. I will put my color match request down in the Dropbox below the video, as well as the pinned comment. I also do custom eyeshadow matches if you're needing help with that. I'm happy to help you troubleshoot whether you already have an artist or not. My goal literally is to make sure everyone loves this makeup. Like, I don't care if you've purchased before and you're not getting the results you want, I can help you troubleshoot. That is what I'm here for. That is an artist's job and so I wanna make sure everybody loves Saint as much as I do. So let me know down in the comments if you learned anything new and thank you for being here. I will see you guys next week. Love you.